This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. We've had so many conversations and hot button debates about the Cleveland Browns offense that it's hard to keep track of all of it, right? We were arguing about the backup quarterback. Is Jameis Winston the right guy to back up Deshaun Watson? We are in a perpetual argument about Deshaun Watson and his future in Cleveland. We are always arguing about wide receivers. Um, you know, is Elijah Moore going to step up? Was Jerry Judy the right signing? Did we pay Jerry Judy too much money? All of these debates has happened. But I think one of the most important debates about this team, this offense in its future, is one that we just stopped talking about for whatever reason. And that's the debate about Ken Dorsey's addition to this Cleveland Browns coaching staff. Now, I, for one, was surprised to see this signing met with as much cynicism as it was, given that Ken Dorsey was a very successful offensive coordinator for most of his tenure. And I know some people will look at it and say, well, he got fired. So... That's an issue, right? And we don't want anybody that's been fired. But think about what kind of ridiculous standard that is when you actually like evaluate it. Andy Reid, great coach, right? Well, he got fired. Bill Belichick, great coach, right? Well, he got fired. Maybe you might say, Quincy, they're not offensive coordinators. They're head coaches. That, that's a little different. Okay, well, hear me out. Every good offensive coordinator has been fired, right? Remember when Kyle Shanahan got fired, ended up with Cleveland for a year? Like, it happens to all of them. Jim Schwartz had been fired, but that didn't stop him and stop us from evaluating his experience and talking about what he brought to the table. And I feel like we moved on from the Ken Dorsey debate to all these other coaches that the Browns hired and what it means for the Browns and if somebody's going to get an extension or not or whatever that meant and this meant that we haven't talked that much in depth about Ken Dorsey. And that's what I hope to do today is talk a little bit more in depth about Ken Dorsey, his fit with the Cleveland Browns, his fit with the personnel and his body of work in Buffalo and before that. And why I think that this move that the Cleveland Browns made might be the most underrated move any team has done in the offseason so far. Because for something that's going to change a lot of what the Browns do, it's been discussed less than Jameis Winston, who I don't think is going to change very much of what the Browns do. But let's start with... A comparison, right? When the Browns brought in Jim Schwartz, we all were able to see the positives that Jim Schwartz could bring to the table. We were all able to see how his experience with guys like Indomitian Sue and running that wide nine front and, you know, man heavy defense, how that was going to fit not just your best defensive player, but your cast of players around that defensive player. And we saw the success that that had this year. Not only did Jim Schwartz leave this season with an award, he won assistant coach of the year, but also Miles Garrett, one defensive player of the year. Um, the Browns had significantly more defensive pro bowlers. They smashed every expectation we set for them in the offseason this year. They were one of the best defenses in the NFL. Point blank period, if not the best defense in the NFL. And we kind of saw that coming because of the fit that Jim Schwartz had. His unique blend of schematic fit and experience. I look at Ken Dorsey and I think to myself, damn, I think I see some of the same stuff, right? When it comes to 
experience, right? What about Ken Dorsey's experience is important? It's his experience with specific type of quarterback. Now, I've talked about this with Kevin, and I think Kevin's a great coach. I think he's the best coach the Browns have had in quite some time, and I don't think he should be at risk of losing his job anytime soon. Let me just put that out there. But I do think there are parts of Kevin Stefanski where he needs more development. He needs more evolvement in this part. And that part is dealing with quarterbacks that aren't in that West Coast offense mode. See, quarterbacks come in many different flavors. We are used to talking about this in the way that Cam Newton described this, right? Game changers in game managers. And usually the game managers are the ones who are seen as less desirable, um, less resourceful, and those guys aren't guys that you can win championships around. I think those two categories of quarterback aren't wrong, but I think how we talk about those two categories of quarterback are wrong. I think Bryce Young is a game changer in terms of his style. He's also probably the worst quarterback in the NFL. I think Brock Purdy is a game manager in terms of his style. I also think he's one of the best 10 quarterbacks in the NFL. I think he's better than some guys who are significantly more talented than him, right? Like I would probably in the right offense want to have Brock Purdy than Justin Herbert because Brock Purdy takes care of business when business needs to be taken care of. And he has a track record of doing that at big moments where Justin Herbert kind of falls away. You know, all those traits, all those skills, that big arm and all that shit, they don't really go there. So I don't really see the distinction as a play level distinction. I think you can, Tom Brady is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. He is a game manager at the core of his style, right? He likes to get the ball on time. He likes to depend on his pre-snap reads. He likes to make sure his footwork really time up with when he gets that release off. Like he, he plays that game manager style. That doesn't limit how good you can be. He is the best of that style that there's ever been. And when we're talking about game changers, Pat Mahomes is probably the best of that style we've ever seen. Both of them are probably going to end up Three best quarterbacks ever. Both of them have completely different styles. Doesn't limit where you rank them or where you put them at the quarterback position. So I think how we talk about it is wrong, but the description is correct. And Kevin Stefanski has demonstrated that when he has a quarterback who's more of that game manager mold, he can cook with that guy, right? You give him Jacoby Brissett, He was cooking with Jacoby Brissett. Um, When Baker Mayfield was trying to play that game manager style, he was cooking with Baker Mayfield. Kirk Cousins, he cooked with Baker. He cooked with Kirk Cousins. Um, The same thing can be true for Joe Flacco, right, who he was able to cook up some good results with. Kevin's really good at working with those guys because Kevin – You know, how he's learned is through the West Coast style, through the Kubiak style. And that is a style that's more complementary to somebody who has a game manager. There's a reason why Brock Purdy can jump in there as a seventh round pick and get that starting job. Meanwhile, Trey Lance, who they drafted in the top five and traded multiple picks for, couldn't get a a hint on the job even when he was healthy because the style did not match up with what Kyle Shanahan wants to do. And sometimes that can be something that limits your team. Sometimes it it doesn't, right? If you get the best available version of that style, both ones, right? I think Josh Allen's game changer style hurts the bills sometimes almost as much as it helps the bills. I think Brock Purdy, being a game manager or, or, or Kirk Cousins is a better example. Being a game manager has helped him as much as it's hurt him in clutch situations in the playoffs. So Kevin has demonstrated that he's really good at working with those game men, right? He has a track record that we can see. And we see that track record with game managers. 
and we think simply because we think less of game managers, because Kevin can get something out of this dude who's a game manager, what's he going to do with the game changer, right? I think that was everybody's thought process when you brought in Deshaun Watson. I think that might have even been Deshaun and Kevin's thought process. But what we found out is that Kevin had a bit more of a time adjusting to how Deshaun plays football than anticipated. And Deshaun had a bit more of a time adjusting how Kevin likes to call and structure an offense than Deshaun anticipated. I think both sides saw what happened over the last two years, saw that the results weren't disastrous, but they weren't up to what they expected in those two years, even with all the injuries and suspensions. And they felt like they could get more out of this. So they brought in Ken Dorsey. And when you talk about a guy who has experience with that game changer style of quarterback, there's nobody who has more, maybe Andy Reid, but outside of Andy Reid, there's really nobody that was available that has more experience in that with that style than Ken Dorsey. Ken Dorsey was a quarterback coach for Cam Newton, somebody who Cam Newton thinks very highly of to this day. He was a quarterback coach to Josh Allen. And then he became Josh Allen's offensive coordinator, where he coordinated some top 10 offenses when it comes to PFF, when it comes to EPA per play, when it comes to um, yards per attempt, when it comes to all the passing metrics that you want to, he was able to devise an offense that hit those marks in Buffalo. He got fired this year. Who knows why? A lot of things were going on in Buffalo this year. Not all of those things were normal. We've all read the headlines about what was going on in Buffalo. We all know that some weird stuff was going down in Buffalo. And I think for us as Browns fans to be extremely judgmental of somebody who got fired because of weird stuff happening in the building is kind of short-sighted because we've experienced how weird stuff happening in the building can lead to very qualified people leaving the organization. Kyle Shannon. But nonetheless, that is the one big flaw with Kevin Stefanski, and I think Ken Dorsey helps fix it. Right, Because Ken is there to fill in the gap with Kevin when it comes to building the offense around Deshaun. Instead of Kevin, who doesn't have that much experience building an offense around the game changer, trying to build an offense around the game changer. And Alex Van Pelt, who doesn't have much experience building an offense around the game changer, trying to build an offense around the game changer. It's Ken Dorsey who can look at Deshaun Watson and point to film of things that he did with Cam Newton. Who can look at Deshaun Watson and point to plays that he drew up for Josh Allen. Guys who play like him. And when I say play like him, I don't mean, oh, they're bigger than the average quarterback and they can run. I think we, we, we talk about play style and we make it so strictly about a player's athletic ability, especially at the quarterback position, that we lose focus of what actually makes a quarterback tick. Like these guys aren't similar to Deshaun Watson because they can run a little bit and break a couple tackles. Like, yeah, that's part of it. These guys are similar to Deshaun Watson because they process the game similar to how Deshaun Watson processes the game. A game manager processes the game post, pre and post snap differently than somebody who is a game changer. That doesn't mean one's better than the other, but it does mean it's different. Kevin wanted Deshaun to process in a way that Kirk Cousins would process. That's not how Deshaun would, right? Deshaun would process in a way that's similar to Josh Allen. He would process in a way that's similar to Cam Newton, right? He wants to see things develop post-snap. He wants to be able to make a post-snap read and adjust to what his wide receiver is seeing. He wants to be able to attack downfield. And maybe he holds on to the ball just a little bit longer, right? He's not going to get rid of that ball cleanly on his fifth step on a five-step drop to throw it out right on time, right in the perfect spot. That's not his game. He's going to hold that ball. He's going to get to the top of his drop. He's going to see look around, and then throw. And that's a successful style that a lot of quarterbacks have played, much like the West Coast offense style is a successful style that a lot of guys have played. But that is what Deshaun is good at. That is why Ken Dorsey is good for him, because he knows or has a better grip 
on how Deshaun is going to process a play and how he likes to process a play and how a quarterback that likes to process a play like that likes to see a play develop. He has a much better grip on that than Kevin Stefanski did. And since he has a much better grip on that, him and Kevin are going to be able to collaborate together to be able to draw up an offense that fits better. Now, will it be immediate day one? I always hesitate to say stuff like that with the offensive side of the ball because we know offense takes a while to get going, right? We see this with offensive lines. We see this with running backs. We see this with quarterbacks, wide receivers. When you make a bunch of changes to your system, it's going to take an adjustment period typically into the regular season, and the Browns are making a bunch of changes to the system. They changed their offensive coordinator. They changed their offensive line coach. They changed their run game coordinator. They changed their tight ends coach. They changed um, you know, their, their passing concept. Like They've changed a ton about the offense. It's a different style. It's not going to be 1,000% different, but it's going to be significantly different. So there's going to be an adjustment period. I don't want to hype y'all up and say week one, he's going to throw for 400. I don't know. <laughs> but what I do know is that I feel like there's a better chance that the offense clicks with Deshaun Watson this year than there was with Kevin Stefanski because I think the issue with Kev and Deshaun was that they both were used to different ways of processing plays. And Deshaun wants to draw up something like this. Kevin wants to draw up something like that. There's going to be natural friction that occurs because those styles are not necessarily the most compatible. Now you have somebody in the room, an offensive coordinator, who understands that better, who's going to be able to design things around Deshaun Watson. And then Kevin, who is a really good offensive mind, can add some wrinkles and Ken Dorsey can find a way to incorporate those good ideas into an offense that fits around Deshaun. It's better for everybody. Ken Dorsey is a good offensive coordinator. Ken Dorsey has an excellent track record. When we talk about the development of Josh Allen and the jump that he made from 2019 to 2020, not enough of us talk about the fact that Ken Dorsey was the quarterback's coach. Right? It's funny that Brian Dabo gets all the credit for developing Josh Allen for helping Josh Allen fix his footwork and and fix his, his bad habits that he had on that side of the ball. But if you know how these teams break down, the offensive coordinator is not spending all of his time with the quarterbacks. The guy that's working with Josh Allen on his footwork, the guy that's working with Josh Allen on his throwing motion, the guy that worked with Josh Allen to help him adjust those bad habits on a day-to-day -day basis was Ken Dorsey. The same guy who helped Cam Newton reach a new level when he won the MVP in 2015. Ken Dorsey. Not to say he's a quarterback whisperer. I don't believe in stuff like that. But I do believe Ken Dorsey is good at his job. He's good at working with quarterbacks. He's good at working with passing concepts. He's pretty damn good. He's qualified. And his experience is very relevant to what the Browns want to do. This hire makes a ton of sense. And I think it's very underrated because we've talked about all kind of things that don't matter this offseason about the Browns offense. Did they bring back Joe Flacco? Did they bring back Jameis Winston? Who cares? Right? How much are they paying Jerry Judy? Who cares? The cap number is not that high. But Ken Dorsey being the offensive coordinator, that matters. The Browns bringing in new offensive staff to adjust the offense, that matters. That's my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night. Peace.